This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a Magnum Superior Euro Profile Cylinder. This is a lock that when you look at it, it appears to be pretty intimidating. However, once you dig into it, understand what's inside and how to approach picking it, it's actually pretty easy to open. Now we can see on this key there is a groove milled into it. That groove controls four sliders in the bottom of the core here, which in turn control a spring-loaded sidebar. Then you can see a bunch of dimple cuts that appear to be haphazardly scattered around the key. There's actually seven dimple cuts, and there are three pins that approach the core from this angle, and four pins that approach it from this angle. Now that doesn't sound like the makings of an easy lock, but here's why it is easy. As for the pins, we have one security pin in there and one anti-bump pin. All the rest are standards, and I've come across two of these locks in the past, and I've been able to rake all of the dimple pins on both of them. As for the sliders in the bottom, the problem with them is they have no false gates. What that means is that if you do have a good approach to manipulating those sliders, you should be able to open them up very quickly. So let's see if I can back my words up. Get some tension in this lock. We'll use a, a little sawtooth dimple rake and see if we can get the pins first. We'll know we have all the pins picked when we get a nice deep false set. After that, we'll go in and, and pick those sliders. Okay. There we go, we got those pins picked. You can see that false set. Now we're gonna go in with a dimple rake and get the sliders. Okay, number ones, two, three. Okay, got three and four. I almost feel like I cheated you, that was so fast. Um, <laughs> let's take this apart and see what's inside. I've actually partially disassembled it already. There's usually a small C-clip right in this little groove here. This is what it looks like. They're a pain in the butt to get out, so I removed it in advance, but that's an anti-snap feature. It makes it such that it's harder to pull the core out because it attaches the front of the core to this reinforced spine. Next thing we need to do to get this apart is to remove a screw that goes from that reinforced spine into the lock body. I'm actually going to disassemble this right on the vise, frankly because it's easier to do it that way. Okay, once we have that, come on, there we go, we can remove the core. Okay, let's lock this guy back up, and then we need a C-clip remover. Now that we have that C-clip off, all we should need is a key and a follower to get this lock apart. As I'm sliding this out, I'm being very careful to hold on to the sidebar on the bottom and the pins on the top. I'm going to drop that sidebar out and try to get the springs out too for the sidebar. I'm going to leave the key in because by leaving the key in, I hold those sliders in place. Let's dump the key pins out first. Okay, one, two. I fell in the wrong spot. Three, oh, we lost three and four. I'm not sure which went which place. We'll figure that out later. Five, six, and seven. Okay, let me rearrange these. Okay, now let's get these sliders out. First slider, second, third, and fourth. And can we get this drill protection out? 
now it seems to be in there pretty pretty firmly okay now for the key pins in slot one is our sole security pin a serrated pin slot two is standard three is standard four is standard so is five six and oh, and seven Seven is our, I'm sorry, seven is our anti-bump pin. Okay, let me give you a close-up of all of this. Okay, all of those key pins are standard. You can see there is a small notch in them. And what that does is contacts that little piece of counter milling that you see in the core. And all that's for is to keep the key pins from falling too deep into the keyway. Then for our driver pins, we have one serrated pin in slot one, standard pins in slots two through six, and an anti-bump pin in slot seven. Up top on slots one through four, you can see our four sliders, and of course they do not have false gates, which makes them very, very easy to pick. And then in slot eight, we have our sidebar and the sidebar springs. Moving over to the core, you can see our seven pin holes. They approach the key at an angle, four from one side, three from the other. We have a massive piece of drill protection that wraps all the way around the key. It looks like it'd probably be pretty darn effective. Then we have four slots for our four sliders the slot for our sidebar, and that's about it. Moving over to this core, you can see we have some drill protection up front, and then you can see those four pins, I'm sorry, seven pins drilled at angles behind it. So that's all I have for you on this Magnum Superior lock, a lock that looks very intimidating at first blush, but once you figure out what's inside and how to approach it, a very, very easy pick. If you have any questions or comments about it, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.